We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. What's up, my dudes? How's it going today? Zach Blake here, and today we're going to be playing Everybody's Gone to the Rapture. Now, I am super excited because this game has um, not really a lot on it. The trailer is just of the surroundings of the environment, and I'm going to be experiencing this game the same time as you guys. I'm going to be doing this full, in detail. <laughs> we're going to be uh, doing this for fun. I don't know. I'm just excited because... It's supposed to be a very um, story-like game, and I'm just excited to um, experience the whole thing. So, just started it up. We got voiceover subtitles. We don't need this, so uh, we can all hear very well. It'll just get in the way of the awesome story, so I don't want to be taken out of it. Let's just start. Now, nothing is known yet except that like it's, it's something to do with the apocalypse, so... It's very figure it out yourself kind of thing. Okay, so the emergency may occur with little normal warning. Prepare to meet any emergency. Okay, I will. Okay, in case of emergency, okay, start. The emergency may occur with little or no warning. Be prepared to meet any emergency that may be key to survival. Or make sure you have the safest environment in case of the emergency may make the difference between life and death. Let's go. Let's go to the start. Ah, <sighs> loading screens. So yeah, I'm hoping this game is going to be story-based good. I mean, the story-wise is going to be good. Because you have to figure everything out yourself. And it was supposed to be... Oh, it's supposed to be like... Uh, really good voiceovers, really good graphics. Everything was just supposed to be top-notch. So, let's see how this all turns out. Hopefully you guys have liked the Facebook pages and or my Facebook page and my Twitter page so uh, you're already caught up if you already did like it you probably already know when this episode came out or whatever I'm excited I just I'm talking so much I don't know what to expect This is Dr. Catherine Collins. I don't know if anyone will ever hear this. It's all over. I'm the only one left. So what happened? Music in this game is already amazing. So, there was a, a thing that basically said, in this game there's no hand-holding. It just puts you right into the game. You gotta figure everything out. It says this is the Vallis Observatory, which probably has to do with something with science. And I could hear things going on right now. I'm going to continue to broadcast for as long as I am able. If I'm right... You should be able to pick up the signal right across the valley. The event has left markers. What's this event? We don't understand it yet, but we're going to keep working to try and understand it. You can use them to find what you're looking for. The answers, they're all here. The answers are in the light. The answers are in the light. One, six, one, four, one, five, 
Hmm. Eight. What? Something's. I, so it's vibrating my controller. What's going on? You walk through here? No? This is kind of like eerie. What's that? Is there a cell phone around here? Oh. This is a special announcement by the Emergency Measures Committee. Due to exceptional circumstances, radio and television in this area has been brought under the control of the EMC as per the Crisis Preparedness and Action Bill of 1982. Okay. Keep your radio and television on at all times. Stay indoors and avoid contact with other people. Do not attempt to telephone outside your local area. Do not panic and remain civil and calm. Stay tuned to this station for updates. Okay, so it's... Whoa, what is that? Everybody just saw that, right? What? Okay, so... Obviously there was a catastrophe, something apocalyptic happened, and a lot of people died, and now the people who are alive are just trying to survive. There are emergency measures put in place. What is this? What am I doing? I'm tilting the controller. Whoa, what is going on? What? What is this? I'm trying to do my job. You two will be the only staff on site for this rotation. I'm just saying, if the main gate's power fails, then there's no way in or out of the observatory. That's why there are backup generators. Jesus, why the hell are we even discussing this? Just don't you come running to me if you get locked in. If we get locked in, we won't be able to come running to you, will we? Hmm. You let us worry about the clever stuff and you can concentrate on sweeping up leaves and changing light bulbs. Happy? Now piss off. Ah, so. That was unnecessary. Just because you're angry with me doesn't mean you have to take it out on everyone else. Kate, can we just talk about this? No. Mm. Steven, I'm done. I just want to get out of this place, and tonight is our best chance of doing that. You prep the arrays, I'm heading up to Tower 6. Kate. I love you. You know that, right? Yeah, I know that. Come on, let's get started. Whoa. So I'm guessing the storytelling is done a lot by that. It was telling basically how... I, I'm guessing what happened before the apocalypse. People just trying to set up for the word or something generator-wise. Let's see what's going on here. The graphics in this game are amazing. What is this? What is this? Jeremy. Should we go that way? Yeah, I guess so. It's all really so crazy. Just imagine waking up, uh, just and there's everybody's gone. It's very strange to think about. Oh, and another broadcast. Let's go pick this up. Oh no, it's a telephone. How do we get in there? Who's that? Hello? Kate, if you can hear this, you need to shut down the optical array. It's using the observatory as a conduit to reach us, and it started spreading its range beyond the valley. Kate, we can't afford to let it do that. It's getting stronger. 
I'm going to call Clive back and I'm going to force him to order the strike. I just don't see what other choice we have. God knows Hello, can you hear one. me? We need help. Who are you? Um, so I haven't read a lot about this, but I think my name is Kate. Okay, that is crazy. But I think these things are my memories, because I heard him talking about, uh, Kate, like, in that last memory by the generator, so. Something about Kate, and like, oh, I love you, blah, blah, blah. There's a memory right here. Don't be so hard on yourself. We've all had rejections. You haven't. <laughs> Come on. We'll look at the figures, tighten up the data, and resubmit. Your core idea is sound. You just got the number slightly wrong. Don't patronize me. I'm not patronizing you. I think you are a brilliant man, Dr. Appleton. Listen. I'm here, right? We're together, you and me. The alignment event tomorrow. It's yours, okay? You saw the opportunity, you ran the numbers. Even if they can't see it. I'm proud of you. Is that supposed to make me feel better? See you then. Look on the bright side, I'm around here. <laughs> You're a hero. Prodigal son returns, right? <laughs> I'm surprised they haven't erected a statue in your honor yet. <laughs> oh, you can laugh all you want. But I'll bet the parish council have a subcommittee working on that right now. <laughs> <laughs> So, I'm assuming those are memories from before. I don't know if it's from my character or not. But, uh, let's see. Is this open here? Closed until further notice. We got the flu. Please try the seventh whistler. We'll be back in business as soon as we're up and about. So, in this game, I'm... Assuming that there was a flu virus that got way out of hand, the influenza. I remember watching the trailer for it. The influenza is what caused so many deaths. You could hear the voices of the people. And in the background, you could hear that uh, that uh, Black Ops 3 kind of thing. The one, there, or not Black Ops 3, Black Ops uh, 1, the 1, 3, 5, 0, the numbers. We're on Haverton Road right now. Quarantine. This area has been quarantined and sealed as per the Crisis Preparedness and Action Bill of 1982. Do not attempt to leave. You will be detained. Do not attempt to telephone outside your local area. Keep your radio on at all times for further information. Issued by the District Emergency Measures Committee. It's locked. Okay. Well, the side's open. Extraordinary. Found a radio. The whole thing reminds me of high school. <laughs> Seeing Mars for the first time. That same rush of excitement. <laughs> My hands are shaking. It seems like the world came to a halt. There's picnic and uh, picnic stuff, rackets, like somebody had something planned. Wonder if this door's open. A bowl. Oh, that's locked. Can't 
in there. Huh. Let's try this. I don't think this has to do with anything, but maybe there's something in here. Nope, can't even open it. Uh, let's see if we can go into this house. I'm sure there has to be something. Wait. Oh, I can't open it. it. Just opens up the other way. What's in here? I don't know. It's a light. Huh. Hello? Huh? Hello? Oh, that scared me. Oh, Amanda, I thought you'd left town. We, we tried. We did try. But they've closed all the roads and you can't get through. And What's this? And then George and Ben said they had headaches. And then they started bleeding. And... But it was horrible. They were so scared. So Neil turned the car around and, um, and we saw the house was open and I know we shouldn't have but we just came in to clean up the kids and, and then Neil and I started bleeding as well and it is all over my blouse. Everyone was so tired. It's all right, Amanda. Everything will be all right. Just try and calm down and tell me where Neil and the children are. They're upstairs. They were tired and Neil said they could take a nap in the bed and you know, I thought Barbara wouldn't mind his only children and, and I was so tired so Neil took them up, he took them upstairs to tuck them in. And? That was six hours ago. I never came back down. Oh no. It's a bit too frightened. Why don't we go and look together? I can hold your hand if you like. Yeah. yeah I think I could manage that, yes. Will you please help me? Of course I'll help you. It's the blood Neil. from the influenza. Neil, are you there? This is the only door that opens. There's blood everywhere, all of this stuff. It says mommy. Let's try this door again. That's crazy. It's it reminds me of uh, a long time ago when the plague was just killing everybody. Nobody can come in contact with each other. Right now it's six o'clock, six ten or five six six. things going all the way over there so what I'm assuming is everybody's dead because nobody uh, uh, everybody was just basically dying of the flu 
and it just spread like crazy and uh, I don't think anybody expected it we've been here before right Georgie, leave it alone. It might have fleas. Hello, Amanda. What are they up to? Oh, they found another dead bird. I do wish the council would clean them up. Well, apparently they're saying it's a flu epidemic. And I gather they'll be closing the roads and stations. So they're worried enough for that. Oh, for goodness sake. Well, you don't mess about with the flu outbreak, I suppose. But look, I'm just saying, if you were planning on taking the kids to Wales, now might be the time to do it. Well, thanks, Barbara. I'll have a word with Neil, see what he thinks. Now, George, Benjamin, for God's sake, leave it alone. And, uh, these are the dead birds. So, uh, this takes place in the UK, I'm guessing, for the UK oil. And the accents. People are probably saying, well, obviously. <laughs> uh, let's see, what's going on here? Let's go in this house and uh, let's see what's going on here. Stop it. We're right in the fight with you. Stop it. I saw you from the main road. Not many people are moving around now. I was looking for Dr. Wade. Listen, Frank. I don't know what's happened, but your Stephen seems to think he's responsible. I reckon he is. He said, uh, Kate's still up at the observatory, but the gates are locked. Frank, there's going to be a rescue soon, I'm sure of it. They'll send planes or something. Well, they'll send planes, all right. This pattern of his, we're in the center of it. Which means if they intend to stop it, we're right in the firing line. Very confusing, this whole thing. Whoa, 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 what happened here? That doesn't open. That doesn't open either. Huh. Is 
that a person up there? Oh no, it's a tombstone. Okay. This is all locked. You can see suitcases of people probably trying to leave. People probably arrested them because of the quarantine. That's crazy. Summer fail. Wanted. Trumbo bric a brac raffle prizes, old clothes. Uh, donations. Please. Okay. These for all the donations of toys. Just have a word with them, perhaps. No, they listen to you. Well, I really don't see what it has to do with me at all. The village looks up to you. I just think with what's been happening with Mr. Coles and uh, Mrs. Boughton and the others, that people need somewhere to talk, to feel safe. Perhaps they don't think that your church is somewhere they feel particularly safe. I don't need your forgiveness, Wendy. Or theirs. Whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. Romans chapter 2, verse 1. Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. Matthew chapter 6, verse 1. It's not my judgment you should be worried about, Father. But fine. I'll talk to Barbara. Ask her to put a note up in the surgery about an extra service. Will that do? Everything's locked. Now this game is very mysterious, um, and everything is told by the, basically the events recounted of, uh, spoken, uh, things. I wonder how this game progresses, it's very interesting. And even reach the back fence, silly old bugger. Well, loaves and fishes we can manage, Father but garden Jeremy, designs a little beyond. Might I have a word? Mrs. Boyles, of course. Meg, will you excuse us, please? Uh, see you back at Charlie's later. Cheerio, Wendy. I was speaking to Barbara. She said there were some irregularities about Mary's morphine. Good grief. I mean, those are private medical records. Barbara should know better than to be discussing that sort of thing with you. If Dr. Wade finds out, he'll have no choice but to suspend her. Damn it, Wendy! Your brother is grieving. Mary was sick for a long time, and I'm glad it's over for her. Go and support Frank. He needs you now. God knows what you did. He sees. I just pray you can overlook Mary's weakness, but you, a man of the cloth, if you, have an issue you with bring shame on this parish. If you have an issue with me, I suggest you write to the Bishop of the Diocese. I have parishioners to attend to, excuse me.
the graveyard, and this is probably where they buried the whole town. And it sucks that probably the last person who's here, which is probably me, had to bury the last person. I mean, these graves look kind of recent. Although nothing is said on their tombstones. Oh, I gotta open up the other one. The influenza. The flu is highly contagious and do not attempt to travel. An outbreak of Spanish influenza has been infected in this region. If you think you have the symptoms or anything, or stay in your house and drink plenty of fluids in case of emergency contact or local doctor. Block doctor surgery. Huh. What's back here? Can't be opened. The whole rest of the town is empty. It's basically so surreal. What's over here? Badger's Law. Well, it seems like we're making a roundabout circle now in order to hit something else. Oh, that opens up this way. Here, I think, is a ranch? What is this? Huh. Or is this the doctor's office? the kitchen. Whoa. What about the station? That's shut down too. So there's no way in or out of the valley. They're obviously serious about this flu thing. Phil doesn't think it's flu at all. He said he's been practicing medicine for 30 years and he's seen plenty of flu and he said this doesn't feel right at all. Well, there's nothing of any use on the radio. Sorry I'm late, everyone. Have you started? Yes, but to be honest, there's not really that much to discuss. This quarantine is in place, there's roadblocks and everything. No one really seems to know anything, but people are definitely missing. More of them too, not just a couple of old biddies. No one's seen the Sullivan since yesterday and the house is just sitting there unlocked. I just got back from the farm. All of Frank's cows died in the night. He's devastated. Poor man. Hasn't he had enough for one year? First Mary and now this. Well, if no one's coming in to sort this mess out, we're just going to have to do it ourselves. Uh, Barbara, get Phil to do a stock take on medication. Jeremy, put the word out for people to congregate at the village hall. It's best we get everyone in one place for the time being. Good. 
I'll organise supplies. We'll have a lot of hungry mouths to feed. There's plenty at the depot, but well, let's start with what's here in the village. I'll draw up a rotor. Charlie, you help me with that? Anything for you, Meg. I'll head out into the valley and scoop up the isolated families and check in with Lizzie Graves at the camp. Now, has anyone seen or heard anything from Stephen Appleton or his wife? So that person talking, they referred to as Jeremy, and that was who we were following. Jeremy's ghost thingy. And it says right here, volunteers, Jeremy, more posters. And they were talking about the quarantine. The whole town was basically blocked off from meeting any, any other town. That's crazy. And to know that it was something that serious to where you couldn't even see anybody else. Your family who was out of town, you couldn't even be able to see. What do we got here? Pogo stick. We have a uh, football field. We have some more houses over here. Is that out on the field? You can hear the football cheers from uh, the past. So now we're going to head over to the Houses over there on the right. We haven't went to yet. I and uh, I skipped over them and went over there. Ended up walking around. So let's see what we missed over here. I saw you doing that. Go away from me. Don't come near me. This is people's property. You're scaring them. It's all over the village. It's got into everything. It's so fast. What are you talking about? It's travelling down the wires. Dear God, man, you've lost your mind. Where is Kate? What have you done with her? Don't you understand? It's breaching the quarantine and adapting. Give me that bloody can. Hand it over, Appleton. Look, get off. No, Sam, stop it. You weedy little shit. Give it's mine! Can. Give me the can! Give me the can. I need it. Grow up! Fuck. Oh, God, no. It's starting to manifest itself everywhere. Stephen, come back! Oh, Christ! Dave's shop? Sorry, Dave. Shop's closed. This was the... Just the average store, the grocery store. News, pet food. This is the mail, I'm assuming.
Oh, we were already in there. So we made it full circle. Uh, let's head over there to that building. And then to that auto shop. We haven't been there yet. And it seems like this is a really small town. So I can understand how frustrating it would have been to be quarantined, knowing everybody in here. And you wouldn't be able to contact anybody if you knew them. Where's Kate? Where do you think she is? Stephen, what's going on? Screw Kate. It's all her fault anyway. What's that mark on your face? Stephen! Stephen! Why was it all Kate's fault? Let's head down to the uh, auto shop slash gas station to see what happens. Meg, well, come and have a look at this. Oh, I don't believe it. Charlie? Jeremy reckons someone had been raiding all the empty houses. He said a load of stuff had been taken. What's up? It looks like someone's been collecting their own supplies. Bastard. Well, we've got enough stock in the warehouse to keep the entire village going for months. We should get a truck. What, and go and get all of it now? Yeah, why not? It's Appleton. It's that bloody crackpot Stephen Appleton. I'm gonna fucking do him. Sam, it's fine. We'd better get moving before the weather turns. You come in. We'll swing by the camp and get Rachel on the way back. So, there were people that were just stealing Stephen Appleton. Wendy. Oh, 
precios. Seems like these are the spirits of the people. Oh, just for a few days, yeah. First thing in the morning. I don't want the kids to catch this flu if it's going round. It's probably that father, Jeremy, spreading it around while he tries to bully everyone into donations for the summer fete. It seems very quiet in the village, actually, Wendy. Not much bullying to be done. Oh, father. I didn't know you were here. Clearly. Listen, I came up here to tell Amanda that we've had some vandalism in the village. Must be a teenage thing. Tagging, I think they call it. Someone's painting all over doors and things. Little vandals. Well, I'll tell Neil to make sure we're properly locked up when we go. A good man like my Eddie, gone. And these thugs and yops running around defacing property. He gave everything to his country, and look what he got in return. Nothing but an early death. He had a good life, Wendy. He had a short life. I look to my birds, father. Lives lived unencumbered. Free and simple. That's as God meant things to be. Every computer in the observatory has set itself to 6.07 a.m. June 6th, 1984. I don't understand what that means. June 6th, 1984. Time still. Let go. So we're here, we were at the observatory, we walked into the town of Yachton, now we're in the Tri Tripworth Forest, Tipworth, okay, let's go where the road takes us, figuring out the story of the people that lived here. Jeremy was the father, the uh, priest, and uh, he was up here basically telling Wendy uh, everything. These are the memories, I'm assuming, are of these people. Stephen Appleton is suspected of stealing from people's houses, and there are teens who are painting on windows and doors and everything. While the flu is killing people. And here is a phone. Oh, it's over here. 
got as far as the Haverton substation before we cut the lines. The interchange there just started dialing numbers at random. And the symptoms you're seeing match those we've been tracking here? Sickness, headaches, nosebleeds, eventual hemorrhage, then just light, whatever the hell that means. Then we've got to stop it before it finds another way out of the valley. Clive, you've got to order a strike. What? An airstrike. We have to kill it. No. No, uh, I don't agree. We've quarantined the valley, we've cut the lines, it's contained. What if you're wrong? Are you happy to have that on your conscience? Stephen, I said it's contained. So people had to make the decision on whether or not to destroy and kill everybody in this entire town to uh, make sure that the influenza didn't get out. I'm pretty sure they didn't do that. However, you don't see any bodies or anything, so it's like... And there's no destruction on any of these houses, so I assume there is no airstrike. Hello? Frank Appleton? Break a lost cowboy, this is traveling Sherlock. You copy, over. You dab bugger, Charlie. You don't do it when you're using the phone. You take this too seriously, Appleton, I'm telling you. It is serious. It's not larking about. You've been listening to your number stations again, Frankie. It's not funny. <laughs> it's serious stuff, and you should mind it. Now then, I'm assuming this is about a pint. I am going to the Whistler. My round, I think. I'll never argue with that. Frank, have you seen the sky? It's amazing. Don't think I've ever seen anything like it. I didn't realize we were off to a poetry recital as well, Charlie. <sighs> There's a road that goes up here. Not sure if it means anything. But there's a lot of flowers. No, it's a dead end. Let's see if any of this is openable. You can see all the blood, rags, and tissues. came from. We're gonna walk through here. And there's random dead birds everywhere like they were infected by the Terry food, called too. this morning. Said there was a problem with Harvey. Said he couldn't get through to the vet so I said I'd come round and take a look. There's a lot of dead birds today. Oh, dang. More like. here, too, poor little things. I've been trying to get hold of Steve, and he always knows what to do. Got round here, and no sign of either of them. With any luck, the stupid creature will have run under a car. It's probably rabies. Everything's just left in a wreck. Dead birds are everywhere. Huh. We got the tip fourth woods. Harvey! Harvey, come on, boy! Come on, Harvey! Come on, Harvey! Come on, boy! Harvey! Harvey! Push it! Push the blood 
pretty thing. You push it. I told you it would get stuck. I should have just taken the car. This was a stupid idea. <sighs> Moving here was a stupid idea. And I told you, Barbara said they've blocked the roads. Oh, no, Barbara says so. You go and look then. Wait, is that Harvey? Harvey? Harvey! Harvey! Here, boy! Come here, boy! I'm assuming uh, this is a new family moving into the area, not knowing of uh, the current situation. What do we got here? Wendy, I'm married. You have to stop this. He's still sweet on you, Elizabeth. He, he left. It's too late. You loved each other long before she came along. It's just about making things as they should be. Wendy, no. It's not like you won't bump into each other anyway. One drink, what can that hurt? Oh, one drink, maybe. Oh, one <laughs> drink, wonderful. Okay, so I now I know Wendy is the old lady. They got um, makeshift horses. Seems like a playground for people. from Stephen. He wants to shut down the receiver. Something about instances across the valley. There's intermittent electrostatic discharges radiating out of Tower 6. All of the electrics on the main gate are blown. I'll find time to take a look once the data stream begins to calm down here. This is a very hard story, but it's very intricate. So we already figured out two I people. I can't see him. Should we go down? Just leave it. We've got to keep moving. Sean! We can't just leave him. He must be really badly hurt. Jesus, Diana, we've got the kid in the car. We should just keep driving. We can't just drive off and... Look! He's there. He's in the car. Oh, oh he's hurt. We've got to get down there. I said, leave him. We've got to get out of the valley while we can. Oh, my God, he's trying to undo his seatbelt. Here we are. It's fine now. Come on, love. Come on. Come on. So we already know two people. We have Wendy and Jeremy. Wendy's an old lady and Jeremy's the... Jeremy is the uh, priest. Car accident. For the auto repair guy. I don't know if these things are random or it actually leads it to certain points.
Oh, this just leads back to the other thing. So we're gonna make our way back over there. So, now that we've met Wendy and Jeremy, there's other people that we're gonna probably need to encounter their spirit. Very uh, weird to see what people do under the uh, times of, like, apocalypse. People not even helping other people in a car accident, trying to help themselves. still hear her talking. Good grief, Wendy. you catch your death. They're all dead, Father. All of my birds. Here. Take my jacket. I tried to be a good woman, a Christian woman, but I've been proud. Just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. What matters is we try our best. God sees that. Come back to the village with me. I'm not so far from Stevens now. I need to find my son. It's what Eddie would have done. Yes, I suppose it is. I'll say a prayer for you. Thank you, Father. She loved you, you know, Mary. You helped her. I'm sorry if I judged you harshly. It doesn't matter now. It's late. You, you should find a place to sleep. I'm sure when the sun comes up, everything will seem better. So what we figured out is Wendy, Wendy's last name is uh, Applestein or Applestein, because her son is Stephen. Jeremy, who is the priest, his wife was Mary, I'm assuming, and Eddie was the husband of Mary, or uh, husband of uh, Wendy, the old lady. train derailed. Whoa. That's crazy. Howard! Howard! What's happened? Stephen, thank God. Listen, I need you to get to the junction box. See if there's a phone working. No, stay back! Don't come up here! Oh, Christ. Is that... Bloody idiot! <laughs> Where the hell did they think they were going? I think they must have thought they could walk out along the line. Well, there won't be any more trains now. You're a callous bastard, Stephen. Just pragmatic, Howard. Did you say there's a working phone in the junction box? P. 
people walked onto the the uh, railroad tracks? Is that why it derailed? Junction box out of commission until further notice. Huh. I've lost my shoes. I lost my shoes, sir. There's arches on the green. They've taken my shoes, sir. Howard? Howard Lantham! You open the door this instant, young man. I lost my shoes. Now get up. Get up. I lost my shoes. What on earth are you doing here, Howard? Stephen. He told me to stay in case Lizzie phoned. Stephen, where is he? What are you doing with those birds? Concentrate, Howard. Where's Stephen? He said we couldn't help them. He took my shoes so I'd stay. Listen to me, Howard Lantham. You find your shoes and you get to the village. Find Father Jeremy, he'll give you some soup or something. Be off with you. Where are you going? I'm gonna find my son. Then I'm gonna ask him what on earth he thinks he's doing. So there's people going crazy, Howard Lantham. It's told by Steven not to go anywhere. It has the infinity sign. This pond. Seeing you here. Oh, is everything all right, my dear? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm all right. I'm all right. It's just Robert. <laughs> that man doesn't deserve you. I know everybody thinks I'm just a mithering old busybody, but someone has to say what everyone else is thinking. We both know that this marriage—it's not how things are supposed to be. Are you talking about me and Robert? Or is this really about Stephen and Kate? I suppose it is. I have to accept it, I know. But she doesn't belong here. You see that, don't you? There's a place for people, and this isn't hers. Oh. But I'm not talking about the colour of her skin. Don't look at me like that. What they do up there? It's not natural. There are some things we're not supposed to understand. I don't like her. And I don't like how Stephen is around her. He was a better man when he was with you. So there was a uh, 
Steven's uh, relationships were not approved by his mom, Wendy, who is the old lady. <clears throat> My voice is cracking a lot. It's like super late. We're still following Wendy's spirit here. So her story is not finished yet. something in the observatory with me. I can feel it reaching out to me. When it's close, I'm overcome with the most profound sense of loneliness. What's in here? Wendy? Wendy, wake up. Eddie! Is that you? No, it's me. It's Frank. Oh, Frank. Oh, the door was open. I didn't think Graham would mind. I'm sure he won't. What are you doing here? Looking for Stephen, but I just ran out of steam. And the door was open. Have you listened to the radio? I thought I heard him on the radio before. It's all over the valley. Don't you get that? This isn't some abstract thing. Whatever came down into the tower has got out. They've quarantined the whole valley. It's right here in the observatory. It's out in the world. It's adapting and spreading. Do you understand? No, we can't turn it away. What's he talking about? I don't know, But if he's on the radio, I can try and reach him on the CB. You go to Stephen's house, and if I get hold of him, I'll tell him to come and find you. It's weird that whenever I go by that spirit, you can hear it, like, talking. It's locked. Rachel, darling, I'm sorry about taping over your music, but we, that is your dad and I, in case you come home, I mean, I know Mrs. Graves is looking after you over there, but just in case you come home, we wanted to let you know we're gonna head over to Bob's. Evie! Evie! Sam, I'm leaving a message for Rachel. Are you going to say hello? Jesus Christ, Steve, we ain't got time for this. The bloody car won't start. We're going to have to walk. Sam, shush. It's for Rachel in case she comes back here. But Charlie says everyone's getting together at the hall. Rachel's at the camp. She'll be fine. 
Rachel, darling, anyway, listen, as I was saying, we're going to be at the village hall. We'll wait there for you. I think it's best if you just stay put and mind what Mrs Graves tells you. We love you, darling. Bye. You finished? Right, grab that bloody case and let's get moving. Come on. I don't know if Rachel's been mentioned, but... There's something over there. Where are we now? Doesn't say... Come on, you stupid bastard! Come on, stop now. Come on. Ah, damn bloody thing! Jesus! Come on, not now! Jesus, come on, you bastard! Start! Start, you bastard! Come on! Ah. I'm assuming that's uh, Stephen or Rachel's parents. Stephen. Stephen, are you here? It's your mother. Answer me. Stephen! And that's Kate on the radio. Stephen, where is Kate? Are you here? Stephen? I can hear the planes. It's the government coming to rescue us. You can come out now. It's all going to be all right. I can hear the jets coming. It's like when Eddie came home. It's like your dad coming home again.
this is Wendy's spirit. Frank is the one who came to uh, Wendy when she was lying down. I messed up, Frank, but I'd done my time. They shouldn't keep on punishing me. Some folk won't let go, Reese, and they've got nothing better to do than to poke their noses into other people's business. There's nothing you can do about it, son. I'm doing a good job. I'm working hard. I swear, Mrs. Graves thinks I'll start nicking stuff if she turns her back for a second. This is all right. She's one of the good ones. Yeah, well, she's not exactly honest with her husband about what she gets up to. None of that. You're angry about people judging you. Don't be so fast to judge others. I'm sorry, Frank. Keep your gob shut, your nose clean, and your head down. Do you think you can manage that? Gob, nose, head. Got it. And steer clear of that Rachel girl. If I've seen you two making eyes at each other, then so's her dad. And you don't want Sam Baker coming round after you. Now, pass me that socket spanner, and we'll see if we can get this wheel back on. tree in the middle of uh, the field is amazing. We're gonna head over there after the tree. Can you see the observatory from there? That's over the ridge, just past the windmill. Oh. You want to live near the station in case you need a quick getaway? Something like that. <laughs> so you and Steven, I'm sensing there's not a lot of love lost there, huh? That's between him, me, and the cows. 
You're gonna have to explain that one for me. It's nobody else's business. Look, you seem all right to me. You don't want to worry about that lot in the village. Provided I'm left alone, I'm happy. Steven's the one who likes to be at the center of things. <laughs> no change there, then. <laughs> Francis Appleton. You are a bad man. No wonder your sister won't talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> to the other side now. How best, Graham? Morning, Frank. You look a little out of breath. What's up? Bloody observatory gates have failed. I came to see if I could borrow a ladder. Bloody hell, there's a 12-foot drop the other side of that wall. I'm old, but I'm not useless, no. Can I borrow the ladder? No one said you were useless. Reese. Hi, Frank. Fetch Graham the ladder, will you, lad? It's round the side of the barn. Will do. And you be careful. I don't want Stephen Appleton coming mithering round here because you've broken your neck. What are you up to? Get out of my way. This is important. You've been with Lizzie. You mess with her, I'll knock your bloody block off. I son. need to track the pattern. It's critical. What are you talking about, Stephen? People are sick. Birds are dying. My cows are dead. Where's Kate? Still up at the tower for all I know. I could recalibrate the radial coordinates on the primary oscillators. If that holds up... Stephen, where's Kate? What's going on? Just keep out of my way. So Steven has a plan with identifying something that has to do with the influenza. I never mentioned anything about them sickening yesterday. I checked them last night on the way back and they were fine. I woke up this morning and the whole lot had gone. Tell me, Charlie, have you heard any birds today? Well, I've not really been paying any attention. That sister of mine reckons they're dropping out the sky all round the reeking. And Dr. Wade reckons there's sick folk all over the village. 
Meg said not to bother trying to get deliveries out. Said the quarantine in the whole valley. I reckon it's best we just sit it out. It'll all come right, Frank. This'll all come right? Yeah, right. I am sorry about your cows, Frank. But when things settle down, they'll see you all right. There's got to be provision for this sort of thing. You want to listen to the radio more? Things don't seem like they're settling down at all. I tell you, Charlie, something big is happening. So Frank is the one who lost all of his cows. That's crazy. To lose all of your cows in a single day from the flu? Must be a serious strain. There you go. Thanks, Frank, that should get it out of the way. I don't know what happened, it just died on me. Give it another go. Oh, I only just put petrol in it as well. Robert's taken the other car into town. I wish he'd get back. He promised me that he'd be back this morning. You think he's off on another bender? Oh, I can't police him all the time, Frank. He's not a child. What's going on, Lizzie? In. You're seeing Stephen again, aren't you? You two can't keep pithering on like this. If Robert hasn't already worked it out, he soon will. Oh, not if he carries on drinking the way he is. Shit. Pardon my French, but bloody shit thing. Why won't it start? Come on, I'll give you a lift. telescope up and running again, but the pattern has burnt itself onto the lens. It's soaking up light and radiation, but not routing it anywhere. So I can only guess that it's using it as an energy source in its attempts to communicate. It needs more power. I wonder if I could boost the reception by using multiple towers. Kate is always the one on the uh, on the radio, which is also talking about this. Frank, Frank, for God's sake, stop! Keep back, you bastard! I know what you've done. Where's Lizzie? Where is she? I've got to find her. You stay away. Someone's got to warn them. Someone's got to stop it. You can't stop it. You have to understand. You hate me, I get that. But if we don't do this, it's not just the valley, it's everything, Frank. It's all gone. You're talking bollocks. You can't stop it! Jesus! You take one step closer, I'll bash your bloody skull in, I swear to God! All right, all right, I'm going. But if you see Lizzie, tell her to get out. There's still time. Please, Frank, for her, not me. If you're that bloody caring, you can save her yourself. Don't you get it? I have to stay. Someone has to be here to confirm that everyone is dead. So... Steven is trying to help everybody.
So now we're on Appleton's farm. All that's left is uh, Lakeside after this. And then we've been everywhere. Seems like a rain cloud storm is coming in. This is Lizzie now. Mrs. Graves! Lizzie, Mrs. Graves! Rachel? Hey, what on earth is going on? It's been awful. The thunder and the lightning and all the power went out. And everyone was in the hall, so I told them all to stay put. But then Sean, Sean Davis said he wasn't going to be told what to do by a stupid bloody girl and went out for a cigarette. And then Dick come back. And then Di, she went out after him and she didn't come back either. Where is Dylan? Was he with Sean and Di? No, I'd be looking after him. Do you think they'll come back? I, I don't know, Rachel. I don't care what anyone thinks. I just know if he was my baby, I could never leave him. Even if the whole world was coming to an end, I'd make sure he came first. You'd be a good mum, Rachel. But don't worry. It's fine. Go, go back inside and tell everyone that they're doing a great job. A really wonderful job. I just got a few things to finish up here, and then I'll come in and join you. Right. Go on. Now this is the camp that we're in. You can't save them. Just pack a case and meet me at the station. They've closed the lines. Weren't you listening to the radio? Because of the flu. There is no flu, Lizzie. Oh, Christ, Stephen, I'm not stupid. Of course there's no flu. But the stations are still closed. There's an access footpath that runs alongside the main tunnel. You can get out that way. They won't have thought of it. You know what's going on, don't you? You can't use the phone anymore. Well, like you're not using one right now. Funny. Listen. Just don't use the phone after this. No TV or radio either. It can hide in the signal. Oh, you make it sound like it's alive. I don't think we have a word for what it is. Just promise me. Don't tell anyone. Pack quietly. Meet me at the station tomorrow, all right? I feel awful lying and leaving all these people here. It was a brilliant idea about the show. Top marks for that, you clever thing. So, there's no flu? And, okay, so, these things are traveling through lines, electricity, blah blah blah. What things? I have no idea now. So it's not a flu, but, what? It's killing people? And it seems so sad seeing that it's like the daily life is going on. Like, without this flu, whatever's going on, people have a normal life. It's sad to see it all gone. John Coles. Oh, that's the woman's restroom. I hear a phone ring.
This place looks like a uh, spot where everybody came together. There's two. What is this? Oi, Shipley. I want a word with you. What? Get over here, soft lad, and keep your voice down. Do you know who I am? Yeah? You work for Meg Holloway? Charlie Tate. You can call me Charlie. What's this about, Charlie? Rachel Baker. What about her? Oh, come on, son. I wasn't born yesterday. Are you looking to get your head kicked in? She's 16. She's not a kid. You try telling her dad that. He'll bloody kill you. I love her, though. You can't stop love. I'm not telling you to stop anything. Just be careful, that's all. Hmm. So I'm guessing there was a love between... I'm assuming that was Steven and Rachel. And over there are two spirits, which could be the baby, because it's a small little spirit. More dead birds. Look at the tennis courts. Sunburn, but it's a funny shape. Is it sore? I can't feel it at all. Don't fuss over it. I can't believe that you left Kate there. Why won't you tell me what happened? She's probably not even noticed I've gone. Uh, it's really nothing. You're lying. Don't lie to me. Fine. We had a row. She'll work all night anyway. Stephen, listen to me. Was there an accident? Is that how your face got burnt? It's nothing. Something, I don't know. Just got a bit shaken up and then we fought. She wanted to stay and collect more data. Was she burnt as well? Is everything all right? Jesus, Liz, are you sleeping with me or her? She's fine, we're both fine. I don't want to talk about her. I came here to see you. I just worry... Well, or... don't. Come to bed. was that he treated me like I was too stupid to notice. I dream through the light storm and see the pattern dancing on his skin as he burns. I wake up with eyes full of liquid light. I'm going to concentrate all five remaining towers on the same point in the sky. If it is establishing conduits for communication, that should create a jump in bandwidth. Um, from what I'm getting is that Steven liked Rachel. She's only 16. I'm, uh, what is it? I'm guessing that he liked her. 
He liked Rachel, he liked Liz, and he liked Kate. And he was taking advantage of these people. On the radio that they're closing the roads. Something about the flu? D no one here has flu, Sean. There's no flu here. I overheard Mrs. Graves and she said another family of Upton left. She said they must have left last night, but the car and all that stuff's still here. Screw this day. There's 15 people Upton left in two days. I don't like it. Where's the baby? Asleep in the caravan. Sean, I don't want to sit around you waiting for it to get worse. I reckon if we leave now, we can get out to the valley before they get their acts together and close the roads. You think so? Yeah, we can go the back roads, through the woods. I'll leave some money on the side for Mrs. Graves. You know her husband isn't back yet either. He's a boozer, right? That's what I've heard. That's her problem anyway. Don't be unkind, Sean. Come on, let's go and get there then. I think it was instant. I, I know that's no help. Can you leave me alone? There was nothing we could do. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, Ben. Oh, you've woken the baby. Just leave me alone. Rachel, I'm sorry. Sorry. And you found it like this? Yeah. I got into the habit of checking in first thing in the morning just to make sure he's had his pills. Mr. Coles is not a well man, Elizabeth. It's entirely possible he upped and wandered off. If things progressed, the mind can be a fragile thing, you know? It's just not very like him, that's all I'm saying, Doctor. He never misses the mid-morning bingo. He didn't smoke, did he? Not that I knew of. There's a funny... It's like ash. Well, that, that is odd. Reese cleaned in here yesterday afternoon. I'll have to have a word. It's not like cigarette ash. Strange. Dr. Wade, there's just been a phone call. We need it back at the village. Apparently, Mrs. Barton has disappeared. Seen anything like it? 
They must be well happy at the observatory place. They're probably all partying there right now. This is right, boss. <laughs> it is. Right. That's me. Short leash. Kids up half for night. Bloody teething. Mrs. will kill me if I'm gone too long. <laughs> Good night, mate. No, I... This uh, aspect of the story is very intricate. What happened here? Can't open anything. So there's basically just quarantining this entire valley to try to keep everything out. People snuck out anyway. You shouldn't be smoking, you know. Not in your condition. <laughs> Stephen's fault. He got me started again. I'm not going to try and stop you, but the weather's looking pretty rough. There's a storm coming. That's what Stephen said. He said he'll meet me, but there's things he has to do first. He seems to think that all of this is connected to him. I don't know. I I'm going anyway, whether he comes or not. I'm assuming Stephen has thought of a way through the quarantine. Oh, he's clever. you got to give him that. Do you trust him, though? Well, I love him, so I'd hope that was good enough. I hope so, too. Listen, if you can't get through, for whatever reason, I'm uh, getting people together at the village hall, rounding up stragglers, that sort of thing. Yeah, I've got all the campers together here, doing a show. Peter Pan. The kids love it. It'll take their minds off things. Hey, did you see that? towers are now operating together and I've got the reception up to the red zone but it's not enough. I'm going to try and route the signal through tower 6 to create a singular point of reception and re-coordinate the optical array which should, in theory, focus a signal spike on the point of origin. If I conceptualize this origin point as a seventh tower then it makes a kind of sense. Kind of. I think we're moving so far beyond everything I understand about physics. Over there's something, so let's go check that out. Everything's just so mesmerizing here. 
so quiet and still, yet ominous. It's Kate. Elizabeth? Lizzie. I heard a lot about you. It's good, you know, you and Emma, it's not difficult or anything. Should it be? I'm sorry? You said it wasn't difficult. I don't see why it would be difficult. You and Stephen were together a long time ago. We moved away. It certainly isn't difficult for me. I I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend you or... No, I'm not offended. Listen, Elizabeth... I... But Lizzie, please. <laughs> Lizzie. Right. You seem like an okay type of person. And I'm not trying to be rude, I promise. But let's try and be realistic here, huh? Let's, um, try and do our best. It's a British thing, right? Yeah, yeah. I suppose it is. We'll do our best then. I think, uh, I think that Kate knew, which was, that was Kate and Lizzie talking, I think Kate knew that, uh, Lizzie was sleeping with Steven. What's going on over here? She's done a runner. Don't say that, Reese. She wouldn't do that. Would she? What about Dylan? She's not exactly jumped at the chance of looking after him, is she? She just left you to it. She's not coming back. Then let her go. She's always thinking of everyone else. There must be something important she needs to do. It looks like you're in charge now. So I guess this means we're not leaving, are we? Spain can wait. Listen, you get back in there, and you make this the best bloody Peter Pan ever performed in England. And I'm gonna go and get your mum and dad. Promise me you'll come back. I promise. This says, I love Rachel B. And I think that was Steven talking to Rachel.
Well, let's uh, let's head back to uh, the spirit. Let's try to see where it's going. Seems to always follow behind me now. I don't know if it's a live thing or not. Like if somebody's still alive. Let me get that. Oh, I manage. Is your hip giving you grief today? Always gives me grief. And I managed for the last ten years, so you're a little late for the night in shining armor routine. Suit yourself, I'm only trying to help. God damn it, Stephen. I'm not some useless, sappy girl that you can just string along forever. Look around you. I made all of this. I built it on my own when everyone else had written me off as some poor little cripple. You know that's not how I see you. Well, you weren't there, were you? No. You'd given up on me long before the accident. What do you want from me, Lizzie? I love you. I'll do anything. Anything except okay? I thought not. I love you too, but sometimes I think you just say what you think everyone else wants to hear. It's true, that's what he says to most of the people now. Seems like there's something over there, hold on. We have to walk over here to get it. The spirit just pushed me back. It's over here. I guess not. Here. Can't. 
The doors didn't open last time. Okay, here we go. Goosebumps. I just... I got it, guys. These are the stories of the people during the moments of when the airstrike hit. All these people died. Wendy, when she was dying, you could hear her saying, This is... They're coming for us. We're finally gonna get out of here. And as the, air, uh, the airstrike happened, all these people died. of those people. Wow.
now we're on Steven. Steven's story. There's data coming through faster than I can encode it. I've already lost two processors. They keep burning out. Please, I love you. You need to get out of there. It's not safe. I need you, Steven. I need you here. I can open the gate manually. I can let you in. It's too dangerous. You don't understand what's happening. No, here. you don't understand. We can solve this. We can find a way. I just need more power. I need to amplify the signal, and I can't do it on my own. You saw the opportunity. You ran the numbers, remember? We're responsible for all this. You and me. <laughs> it's not just you and me anymore, though, is it? Jesus, Kate, you're trying to talk to it, aren't you? Kate, you can't. Steven, I have to. Completely dead, it won't start. It's only a short walk to the camp. I think we should split up. You go and fetch Rachel. I'll go back to the village and find Evie. I don't think we should split up. I don't want to either, Charlie, but we've got to. I'll meet you back at my house later on, okay? We can talk properly then. Why won't you tell me what happened? No, no, actually, you should stay at the camp tonight. Come and find me in the morning. Bring Rachel back. She's going to need her mother. Meg. Just take care of her. Meg! What is it, Charlie? Nothing. Just be careful. I will, I promise. You as well. I'll see you later on. Earlier, we were, um, like in the start of the game, you went to this house with the boombox of the mother who left uh, a message for Rachel saying, like, hey, if you, if you ever come back home, uh, we'll be in the town hall or something. And uh, Rachel, this whole time, was uh, taking care of the baby, was in Peter Pan, the musical thing, and then ended up dying in the airstrike in there, never being able to see her parents. And this is all what I assume. I could be wrong. So the thing that was adapting and stuff is I'm assuming these spirits of- these are not the spirits of people, I'm assuming- I don't- I don't know, this is so complicated. It's not the flu, it's something else, but it's what they determined to be the flu. Like, that's what the government thought, so they quarantined it all up.
It's a beautiful sun right there. Do you think she'll like it? It's in an awful state, Stephen. I don't It'll think It'll be so. an adventure. It'll mean putting down roots here, maybe a family. Are you sure she wants children? What, to stay here? It's not her place, you know. Don't start that again, please. I mean, she's ambitious, love, and she's, well, older. She's not going to want to stay cooped up at home looking after the kids. Is that how you felt about me? Oh, stop it, Stephen. That's not what I meant, and you know it. I'm just saying you should make a choice. If it's a family you want, well, you know how much Lizzie wants a family. Jesus, Mum, I didn't come here for marriage guidance. I just asked what you thought about a fucking house. Stephen Appleton language. Sorry, it's just that you have to understand. Kate is the most brilliant, extraordinary, wonderful person I've ever known. She's, she's like no one else. The way she looks at things. It's like she has whole worlds inside her head. I don't think you or anyone really understands that. The sun is starting to set. And I'm wondering if what's ever being transferred through these lines, this virus or anything, or this actual thing, is what's repeating these numbers. Physical changes are evident. Although the butterfly burn is now faded, I can clearly see the change in my pores up close. As I record these words, I can feel myself hearing them as if for the first time, as if I'm both speaker and listener simultaneously. I am a scientist. I can only deal with the evidence. after the issue. You look well. I don't. 
but thank you. You do. How are you settling in? Nothing changes around here. I mean, it's great to be back. It still feels like home, I suppose. In a funny kind of way. It's been a long time, Stephen. Last time you saw me, I could still walk properly. You look pretty good to me. This is Stephen Stop and Liz. For what it's worth, I'm sorry about how things worked out. Or didn't. Or didn't, right. Do you think you made a mistake leaving? My mum tells me it's never too late to change things, to put things right. Funny. It's just what she said to me the other day. I have been wondering what she meant by that. That's <laughs> embarrassing. Sorry. Yeah, oh, maybe I should go. Why? Stephen, we're both married. I don't think this is a good idea. What isn't? We're just two old friends having a drink, that's all. Okay, now, I'm gonna go off to that house. Hold on, I hear something. What is that sound? I don't know if the sun is setting just for me, like in in the story, or I've been taking a long time trying to figure out everything. Nevertheless, it looks amazing. Kids room. How am I supposed to get into the store? It's in that room. It's downstairs. Yeah, it is. No phones. You know the protocol. That doesn't matter now. It's figured out how to circumvent the telecommunications blackout. What? I didn't think it could. Kate understood. She saw how adaptable it was. How smart. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you're talking about it like it's alive. You have to assume that everyone here is infected. We can't know We're that. We are infected. It's killed all the birds, and now it's in us. It's trying to leave the valley any way it can. The quarantine is not enough. You've got to remove the carriers. You've got to cut off its energy source, its food. I've already told you, Stephen, I'm not going to water you an airstrike. You have to. Now it knows we're onto it. It's going to keep on spreading as fast as it can. The quarantine and blackout will hold it in check. They've cut all of the phones out of the valley, so it's only you communicating Aren't out you now. Are you listening? It's figured out ways around it. Radio waves, something. All of the lines are cut, but the phones are working anyway. You've done all the right things, but it's not enough. You've got to stop it before it adapts again. Stephen, my my family, my, my wife and kids. You know perfectly well what you've got to do. I can't do it. Don't ask me to do it. You're asking me to sign their death warrant, my own family. Damn it, don't you think I'm aware of that? I'll 
you'll still be here when you drop the fucking stuff. Don't you lecture me about sacrifice, you spineless little shit. If you're so full of ideas, you come here and try dealing with it. Tell them the time when we had a choice is over. Tell them to do it. You've got to do it now. Wow. He has to kill his own family. He has to kill himself. He even has to die. Everybody in this whole entire valley has to die in order to keep whatever this thing is from spreading to the world. Where is this thing taking me? What do you want me to say? You knew what you were getting into. Really? Well, I'm sorry we don't measure up to your exacting standards, Dr. Collins. Maybe you just need to give us ordinary humans a break. What? Ordinary humans like Lizzie Graves? Did you really think that I wouldn't find out? Frank told me. Or did you forget there's one person in this shithole who actually talks to me? Kate, it was just a drink. Don't bother, Stephen! Oh, for Christ's sake. Kate, slow down. You were engaged to her, Stephen. You nearly married oh, her. Oh, come on, it was just a drink. Then why the hell did you lie to me about because it? Because I knew you'd be mad and then it would end up in a row. You wanted to focus on the event tonight. Oh, so you were actually doing me a favor. Wow, I guess I just forgot to say thank you. Do not treat me like I'm an idiot. You're overreacting. I know, I know you're stressed. Just... I'm not gonna let you ruin this for me. Kate. Kate, come on, this is crazy. Dang, so something must have happened uh, when Lizzie had a drink with uh, Steven. Either something happened or she took it out of proportion and thought he was cheating on her. We're back on the farm. I don't know where I'm supposed to be going.
Jesus, man, what do you dent your face? It's nothing. You collecting feed? Looks like the supplies haven't been coming in. Huh. Again? The phones are all strange. I can't pinpoint the logic of transmission. You what? What are you doing with that paint? Means the EMC are actually moving at the proper speed. Listen, Frank. Have you uh, heard anything on the radio about a flu outbreak? Doesn't seem much like flu to me. They're shutting down access to the valley to try and isolate it. No. There's something about the phones. I can't put my finger on it quite yet. What are you talking about? Hey, I'm still talking to you. Where are you going? How do I get around it there? This is Catherine Collins, recording for posterity. It's all over. I don't know how long I've got. Whatever he did, whatever the planes were carrying, it's burning my lungs. Probably some kind of nerve agent. I suspect it's only exposure to the pattern that has kept me alive this long. I'm making my way to Tower 6. I'm going to fuse the signals from the optical array. It's make it. They close the tunnel. There's no trains. I've put up a sign. The tunnel, Howard, is it closed? I think so. I don't like it. It's not right at all. Stop whining. It doesn't help anyone. Did you know you're bleeding? Oh, it's this headache. It's just killing me. I haven't had a nosebleed like this since I was a kid. But you've not been to the village? No, I've been here the last couple of days or at home. I've only spoken to Clive at the EMC on the phone. Well, tried to anyway, but with all the crossed lines... It... But no direct contact with any other people? No, no one. What are you talking about? What's going on? It's the pattern. It's adapted again. It doesn't need direct contact to transfer. It's using the phones! What do you mean, direct contact? Stephen!
This is where he uh, told Howard to stay before. Stephen, I don't know if you'll ever listen to this. Uh, maybe you've decided to stay with Kate, and I, I can't blame you for that. But I can't wait for you either. I've got to think about the baby. And, well, I should have left a long time ago. I've run out of excuses for not leaving now. But I do love you, Stephen. And I hope you find peace one way or another. Oh, there's planes coming. Dang, that's where Lizzie died, talking to Steven on the phone, telling him that she loved him and that she was just basically going to leave, and then she died. Appleton! What are you doing here? You thieving bastard! I knew it was you! Listen, take everything you need, but then you have to leave. You don't understand. You can't be near me. Painting these stupid little pictures. Stealing food. You always were a little prick. Please, every second we're in proximity makes it worse. I'm a primary conduit. You're a fucking disgrace. Come here! Don't what touch me! Get off! What's going on? Come in here, Lord! Jesus, Get out over Sam. us! Thinking you're so much better Sam, than no one else. No physical you contact. You stupid fucking missus. Stop she's it. better than any of you. Oh. 
Oh no. Sam. Sam? Meg, please. Don't, don't come near me. Meg! <laughs> Charlie! Meg! Meg, wait! Don't, don't touch me. me! Please, you have to understand, it was an accident. Get off her. Let go, let's just go. Charlie, you have to understand, it was an accident. Just leave him, leave him. What have you done, Appleton, you bastard? Come on, Charlie, let's Meg, just get Charlie, out of here. Meg, Charlie, please! Killed a guy named Sam right here. Traveling through the line. You can see it. When I was a kid, my dad found a fox. It had been hit by a car and couldn't walk anymore. My mum went spare, of course. Made him keep it in the shed. He was already slipping away from us then. He spent hours with that fox, telling it all about Italy and the villages they bombed there. I was... I was jealous, I think. But the fox got more of my dad than I did. But it was dying, that was clear. So one day, I snuck out, took it a sandwich for food. I was only eight. When it bit me, I remember the anger, the shock, the hurt. Running in, screaming from the garden, my mum panicking about rabies. My dad beat it to death with a spade. Oh my gosh. Later I found him crying. I'd done a Kent, son. That's what he said. I'd done a Kent, it was hurting you. That's just a poor, dumb, dying animal. It doesn't know it's hurting us. Christ help us, it's left the valley. It's everywhere now. It's been three hours since the planes went over. I haven't been able to reach anyone on the shortwave. I'm beginning to think I may have made a terrible miscalculation.
دست هم میدانیه ولی نه اون نفت چاس می یه نوا دست هست ولی من نه دو یه وان لایت فاین I'll give you light. After me, there's no one. You'll be all alone again. Forever. Like before. You've taken everyone I've ever loved from me. You made me do things I never even thought I was capable of. But if you think I'm coming with you... Kate? Wait. This is Catherine Collins. I don't know if anyone will ever hear this. It's all over. I'm the only one left. This is Kate's story now. She's a uh, super smart physicist, doctor, everything that's been explained. She just understands everything. She has a mind to comprehend all that's going on. out from the shadow of the tower, across the observatory, over the valley, and consumes the world. Everything is light now. Everything has come to rest. The world is scored by the traces we carved into it. Our presence is everywhere, the bridge joining our stories. This world existed before we came to it, and it will continue without us. In the empty fields and houses, our traces radiate, and others will come to dance in the light we cast. We can slip away gently, unafraid, knowing that everything will continue.
The end is coming now. I'm not afraid. We have each other. We lived apart from them. We understand now our failure to touch, to belong. But it doesn't matter anymore. Everybody is gone, and we will join them. We are born apart, driftwood on the banks of an endless dark ocean, and we will be carried away by the swell soon enough. But in between, in the single day of living, that dancing in a strip of sunlight, we can find what we miss. The love that makes us whole, the imminence. Everybody found their other. This pattern is mine. Wow, that was a pretty good story, guys. If you stuck around to the end, I congratulate you. This is a very long story. In fact, it took three hours to play through it all. Probably gonna take me a lot more to edit it through a little bit. So, if you liked it, please slap a like on there. Um, I appreciate all the support. Please leave a comment too. Um, describing on your interpretation of the story um, to clear up some things for other people and yeah it's crazy uh, thank you guys for watching thank you guys for joining me again um, we're gonna be doing a new black ops uh, beta coming out soon so thank you guys for watching peace out my dudes